Hello, hey everyone. Joey Sparks from the Parish Church of Christ in Parish, Alabama. And in 2022, we're slowly walking through the book of Luke because God wants us to know Jesus. There's a legend told about Napoleon. I'm sure it's told of other leaders of his similar kind of vein in history that uh, he had before him a, a young soldier who had violated their commands and their codes multiple times in a severe way. And now he was worthy of death. He was sentenced to death. And so the mother of this young soldier comes and pleads before the commander, Napoleon, and um, he explains, listen, this is the law and, and he, um, it's justice that he deserves, which is death. And the mom says, but I don't, I'm not asking you for justice. I don't ask for justice. I'm asking for and pleading for mercy. And Napoleon is said to have said, but your son doesn't deserve mercy. And the woman says, sir, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. But mercy is all I ask. And it said that Napoleon then acquiesces and allows the son to survive. He spares the son. So any understanding of mercy from our perspective toward God's mercy toward us must begin with the fact that we don't deserve it. That we are the created, he is the creator. We are sinful, he is holy. And yet he chooses to be good to us. He chooses to offer the most precious gift of his son. Back in the early chapters of Luke, you see Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, Mary's relative, both find out this news. They're going to have these babies. And they both look at it through the lens of what God is giving them that they do not deserve. So Elizabeth, for instance, Chapter 1 and verse 25, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach among people. It would have been tough to have lived in that day. It's tough even now. And to not be able to conceive. Well, now that reproach is taken away from her, even at an old age. Chapter 1 later, verse 46, this song or prayer of Mary Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Now pause for a minute. You see what Mary's saying? God and his holiness and his greatness has been good to me. He, great, loving, good to me. Then she says this, verse 50, And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. What she's expressed in saying God has been good to me is what she would now call mercy. This same goodness, this same mercy is available from generation to generation. You drop down to verse 54. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Because he had been merciful, because he had made the promises of a Savior, he is now keeping that mercy, keeping those promises by sending Jesus through Mary and through Joseph. Later, chapter 1, verse 57, the time came for Elizabeth to give birth. She bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. Both of these women, Elizabeth and Mary, chosen because they were blameless and righteous. They, they stood out as exemplary. And yet they also both knew that this goodness of God and giving them these boys, these babies, that was his mercy. They didn't deserve it. They didn't earn it. But he chose them to bring these men that would change the world into the world. And so we would do well to just... Be sure we see the difference here in justice and mercy. How does, does God go about achieving justice? In this life, it comes through Jesus. It comes through the gospel. 
not by demanding it, not by force, not by manipulation, not by personal vengeance or human vengeance. It comes from us humbly seeking Christ above all and serving and loving all those in need. This is God showing us this mercy that we don't deserve. Micah chapter 7, who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity, passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy or he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. He will cast all of our sins into the depths of the sea. May we do more of what Mary and Elizabeth do here, to pause and to see every blessing, especially the blessing of salvation through Jesus. It's God's mercy that we don't deserve.